Hi guys, uh, so this one we're going to talk about storage device management. This one should be a quick one. And the goal is to talk a little bit about low-level formatting, partitioning, logical drive creation, logical formatting, and the boot block. So low-level formatting um, for HDD drives is basically when, so it's a fresh drive right off of the assembly line and uh, the first thing that we want to do is we want to uh, divide it up into sectors um, and we want to fill these sectors with um, a kind of a placeholder and we'll talk about the placeholder in a second. With SDDs or other non-volatile memory devices, um, we want to initialize the pages and the FTL, right? Um, and then we also want to fill the pages with a special uh, kind of blank placeholder. So these placeholders are, they comprise of header, a tail, tailor, <laughs> and a data area. Um, and so these headers and tailors are really used um, by the controllers. So used by controllers to just mark their boundaries. So the next step, so this, this step is pretty much all done by disk manufacturers. Um, before you actually get the hard drive um, or this uh, solid state drive, it's, it's already done. So the next thing where you kind of step in is you can partition um, your hard drive or your solid state drive. And so this basically will group blocks and sectors into different partitions on different sections on your uh, computer. So if this is your drive, you might want to make a different partition. Say you want to, um, let's say this is Linux, just your Linux. Um, you want to have the whole computer to be Linux, but you might make a different um, partition for your swap space, maybe for your slash home, maybe for slash data. Um, I also make a separate partition for where I install um, optional software, slash OPT. So all these are separate partitions and the um, benefit of this is that, for instance, if something were to fail on my home partition, I could keep all of my data and my um, optional software that I've installed. Uh, so if this crashes, then I'm not, you know, I don't lose all my data if I've stored it in the right spot. Um, in addition, you can also think of partitioning like many of you have probably dual booted your computer and the first thing that you had to do is you had to um, repartition it um, such that, so here, let me back up. So usually then what you get shipped with if you have a, if you get a Windows box is you have, I'll draw it in this way, you have, you have maybe a couple different partitions um, that I'll put. But pretty much Windows takes up this whole, we'll say this is Windows, I don't know, that's how little I know about Windows. This is your C drive, we're going to go with it. Um, and so what you had to do in the first step was you had to repartition your Windows drive such that you could shave off some space, so you say you want to shave off this space um, to put Linux on. So you had to repartition your um, your hard drive so that you had ep extra space that you could change the file format on um, and put Linux on. So you can think of it partitioning within um, a operating system and you can think of it in your whole computer partitioning to put multiple operating systems on um, at the same time. So then volume creation. So this is where um, you create your logical drives. So you actually create that C drive um, in Windows. So at this point, oh, the OS can actually interact with your partition. So this is the point where you set it up so that it can actually put the file system on. Um, and, or it can actually read it so it can actually mount things. Before, um, you may, if you have just your partition set up, but you don't have any volumes there, if you pulled this back up before you installed Linux in your Windows side, you would see that there's there's a partition here, but you wouldn't be able to read anything about it. You wouldn't be able to know if anything was partitioned, was set, put there. Um, so at this point, now you have can create it, and this can be implicit or explicit. So this may be, as soon as you put a file system on it, it may automatically create the volume. 
So this step and the next step can be combined in um, implicit and then explicit. You can actually just create the volume yourself there and then load the file system, which is the next step. So the next step is your logical formatting. And this is basically just you creating your file system. You're, in, you're putting all of your, um, your file system in place. So now that the, now the user can actually interact with your system that's mounted there. The last thing I wanted to talk about was your boot block. So your boot startup program is usually in some sort of flash firmware in your computer. And this is the startup that your computer needs to actually you know, start your computer. So what that startup does is that it has enough code in there that it has that it can bring in the boot code and put it into um, the uh, it can load it into actual main memory. Um, so it can pull up, it can access where the boot code is stored in the hard drive and the partition table, so what partitions are available. And so now it can bring all that up and now it knows um, you know, maybe which partition you want to boot into. You've all probably, if you have it dual booted, you probably have seen the screen where it comes up and it asks you what partition you want to go into. So this partition table will keep um, take all that into account and say maybe you want to part you want to go into Linux. You can you can choose Linux. Um, the alternative way to look at this, oops, no, don't do that, um, is that this could be um, I don't know different drives and I don't know if there's a D drive or an E drive, but this could be your C drive um, to your C volume and that's the one where you want to kind of uh, load into. So um, you can, again, look at it as a global picture if you have multiple operating systems, or you can look at it within one operating system. So that was quick, short, to the point. Um, let me know if you have any questions. Um, thank you.